when I see you, you're in distress. I when I see you, see I speak. You're in stress. I don't know how to stress anything in my life at the moment. Hello, M M M M for M's. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Bandy, guys. Guys, this one only love for like always coming here wearing gowns and stuff. Hey, yeah, Banda, guys. Hey, like this apartment is called Chad. Hi, Maurice. Umi. Umi. Hi, Rose. Today I'm not late. Yes, you are not late. <laughs> you are not late. We are all on time today. We are all on time. We are all on time today. Let's tap the screen. Let's tap the screen so that people can know that we are here. We are here. How are you guys? How are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? How was your week? Hi, pure. Hi. We will have coffee regarding our issue. Let's enjoy today. No, see, I'm supposed to be doing this with you. Like, people. I even tired of asking me when are you coming? See ya. Hi my friend. No go. Hi funny. See ya. People are even asking me like when is Sia coming? When is Sia coming? Hi beautiful Wanda. Wanda, you haven't been here for a while. Were you writing exams? I think you had said you are writing exams or something. Guys, how was the week? Your mind was crazy. I had a I had a tight week. We're doing what we are what we call. PT survey, if you work in the, in the labs, you know what PT survey is, proficiency testing. I'm praying for a job, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Rose Ganene, what is your, 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 your category so that people can help you look for a job? What's your category, Rose? We're doing PT. I was doing PT, guys, this week. Um... I have been writing exams and supplementary. Oh, baby, I hope you did well. We're crossing fingers for those results, Wanda. The closing date of the PT was to, to, is tonight. So even now, uh, I, I left my laptop there, but I've, I've captured everything. Uh, and then I need to write my monthly report and submit it before I sleep. But we, we could not postpone this. Hi, Ndlovuga, the queen. General nurse with Nim Art still waiting for my dispensing results. So you are an RN. I'll try to post as many uh, posts as possible on here, guys. But please, let's create LinkedIn. Guys, guys, must be no LinkedIn. Must be no LinkedIn and be active, Payana. Honestly speaking, um, managers are are active on LinkedIn so please create a LinkedIn account and be active on there as well because even some of the opportunities that I normally share on my timeline here they are from LinkedIn I always see them on my timeline I think my CV is a problem on one of the lives we will talk about current trends of, of, of CVs and how a CV should look like. Maureen is here, so I'm going to send her an invitation. Please, let's tap the screen and get people over here. How do we create a good LinkedIn profile? Honestly speaking, with mine, what I did is I created it and then I keep on updating it. I keep on updating it and I go through other people's profiles. I look at um, profiles of like big people, CEOs and directors. I look at their profiles and see how can I like not copy, but mimic what they, um, they have written on their own profiles on mine. I always update my profile. I always, always update it. Uh, Maureen is here. So we are not going to we are not gonna be wasting we are not gonna be wasting any more time. Sis Zuzile is also here. Sis Zuzile, we acknowledge your presence and forever grateful to have you. Hi Sando Sam, how are you? Hi Z, I'm fine, thanks and you. I'm fine. Where are you gonna you're in Pretoria, right? Yes. Is it also cold there? 
Yo, kakhulu sana. And cope. <laughs> it's so good to finally have you here. You 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 have you've shaken the waves in 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 the profession. Hi Movenda, you've shaken the waves um in the past couple of weeks or months. You you made um I don't know what to call it, but you, you've shaken the country in the profession. And <clears throat> it would be questionable for me not to call you and bring you here in the masses. Um, it would be questionable of my mandate. It would be questionable of what I'm trying to achieve in the profession if I did not bring you here. So. <laughs> I don't even want us to waste time. And I want to say this to the people that are on the comment section, board members, remember to remind people that as they are joining in, because I know there are people who will be joining in and finding us having the conversations. Just remember, remind them that this live is going to be saved on, on YouTube. So if anyone comes in and says, oh, I'm late and they start panicking, just tell them that it's going to be sh uh, saved on, on This Is Nurse Z. And remember, we're going to allow Maureen to narrate her story. And then when she's done, we're going to ask her questions and then we're going to engage, right? So we might not read your questions when uh, Maureen is talking to us because we don't want to interrupt her. But without wasting any time, can you kindly introduce yourself to those who do not know who you are? Thank you so much, Ness Z. Um, I am Dr. Maureen Rufiwa Musi. I am a midwife free educator, a midwife specialist, and also a researcher in the field of maternal and child health care. <laughs> hashtag can i don't know why did i i expect you to say hashtag and then you say like your age because your age is such a big deal <laughs> hashtag 29 year old ba, 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 ba. <laughs> <laughs> i'm in the nqf level number 10 now. <laughs> Listen, we are so I want us to go way back, back, right? Um, Maureen in high school, what was she thinking? Was nursing her first love? Was it something that she went, I know the moment I leave this high school, I'm going straight into nursing. How, how did this, this that we are celebrating today start? okay thank you so much for that i think maureen in high school i'm not sure if she really had some direction but i would want to say that growing up i have always been instilled with this passion or this love of caring you know of caring for people and i've always been instilled with this ubuntu spirit you know ubuntu element i wanted to treat others i wanted to see good in others I, I wanted to see people living a healthy life so i think i grew up being a sickling i was in and out of hospital i was in and out of doctor's surgery so i always saw you know our nurses wearing those nice white you know florence nightingale uh, um, uniform then i thought to myself that you know this is a profession that I would want to find myself in you know this is a noble profession that i would really want to find myself in wow. so in my matric i went and i shadowed um i i went and i worked at a hospital just in, for shadowing just to see what is it that nurses do and i also went to one of my doctors because i was known to this doctor that she's always my patient she always comes so i also went and shadowed her just wait, wait, wait. It? How old were you? How old? Like, how old were you? <laughs> I, do I remember the ages? It was in 2010. I can't remember 2010 minus what. what, what I was but like why 18. did you have so much emotional intelligence at that age? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I was always sick, man, Z. And I really thought to myself, if we have such people that are carrying on task of 
caring you know that are that that are there for the community this is where i would want to find myself working so it didn't really matter to me that i was a nurse or i was a doctor but i wanted to find myself in the hospital you know so growing up like any other black child you want to you want to do medicine you want to do, be a doctor you know so mm -hmm. those were some of the things that i really wanted to be but you know with our parents man they don't save for our future or they don't say save for our you know so nursing was also something that i was i was i was accepted in mm -hmm. and also medicine but when my parents uh, heard that in nursing i'll be paid uh while studying they're like i am danam you're going here <laughs> <laughs> so that's how i ended up in nursing so but i really think that you are placed or, 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 or the, the, there is ways that God works in mysterious ways. He really wanted me to be there in nursing because that is where I was bound to be. So I went and I did my nursing mm -hmm. at the University of Pretoria mm -hmm. and thinking about UP, you know, UP Techies is an Africans yeah. you know, intensive university. So it was very, really, really quite difficult to try and prove yourself as a black child that uh, my dreams are valid or, 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 or I can be a nurse one day or I can really strive and achieve and be this profession that I wanted to be. So I really had a task of trying to prove myself, you know, academically and all that. So I entered into your, into your committees and things like that. And were I you, finished... wait, so wait in in in. I'd like to believe you did very well in high school for you to qualify into medicine as well. And in nursing, uh, did you struggle academically? No. Or you were an A student? Yes, that is why when I graduated with my uh, bachelor's of nursing, I was the first black student to get a distinction, a cum laude for her distinction at the University of Pretoria. So that was in 2015. So I was awarded that <laughs> as the first black student who got a distinction, you know, in the field of nursing. That was really big at that time to achieve such an award, looking at the university that I was enrolled in, which is, you know, your white, your white and Africans intensive university. So that was what i managed to achieve so i had to prove myself i had to study very hard i had to um you know focus hard work and do all those things which is when i was also recognized by golden key um, international and also sigma theta tau inducted me in that because of they saw potential in me from such a, a young age and i should say that i i i, I studied my nursing with bazaris because of um getting distinctions and wow. getting good grades so it, it, it was through hard work and it was through um i really had a passion of even teaching my peers you know anna told me things like that i used to teach my colleagues can really understand you know man let me try and break it down for you you know this and this i had ways of making things of teaching you know concepts and teaching them into simpler ways that was so also easy for my colleagues and, and the fellow students that i was studying with so that's so that's where i think the passion of being a midwifery educator came from because of from from university from my undergraduate i was already tutoring i was already you know sharing with others this is how you you make anatomy easier how you make pharmacology easier so those were you know some of the things that yeah that really really made me to to accomplish and and finish my 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 bachelor's at such a high note so when did, did you because you are a midwife specialist when did you identify in your undergrad that in actual fact i mean there are so many um uh, departments in nursing when did you decide that in actual fact i am a midwife how did you fall in love with midwifery like from all the courses that you did in nursing school how did you know that midwifery is the love of your life i i, I would want to think that midwifery called me into being sure. a midwife because during during our clinical placements 
the first time I went to Labour Ward, I think we were in third year. Mm. You know, I remember myself, I remember a, a, a patient was giving birth. She couldn't even get to the delivery rooms and she was giving birth on the on your admission beds. And we had to scream those curtains. Mm. I remember myself holding those curtains, seeing the baby there, seeing the baby crown, the water, the lycra, the, the blood and all that. I'm like, oh my God. Is this what a woman goes through? And I remember myself collapsing just only <laughs> from those <laughs> really from those curtains. And here I am today, a mirror specialist <laughs> after collapsing. You know, so I just want to think that. Wait, you you really, you really collapsed? <laughs> you no, know, I don't remember how that delivery ended. I just. <laughs> So I don't know, but today I am in love with assisting women to give birth. I am in love with bringing a life to earth, you know, just from that, like, that's where my love and my passion for midwifery came about. I, I, it, it, it's funny. That's why I'm saying that I believe that midwifery called me, you know, the yeah. other areas I was not clicking with, with them, you know, mm -hmm. but with mid midwifery, I just. I, I just felt I need to support this woman. I just felt wow. they needed somebody to care for them during that fragile uh, um, time. Because now we're dealing with a mother and a baby, you know, mm -hmm. two people that they are important, that you need to save their lives. Yeah. So that is where I really thought that this is where God is planting me. This is where I can make changes in maternal and child. And also, I think also when I was, still studying it was my first time you know i was i was at um steve Biko hospital with the first birth that i had to do which was a stillbirth you know which 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 was not a good experience to experience mm. that, that should have threw me out yeah I to say you had now a baby that didn't survive you know with with the first delivery sure but the baby somehow somehow the woman was unbooked and um she didn't know that um the baby that she's carrying had um some congenital abnormalities you know mm. so but in that story came the support that i gave to this woman i never supported a a, a woman through her bereavement i was never taught wow. what are the things that i can say to the woman but mm -hmm. i remember that day that woman said your presence just being there with me the whole day you know i didn't go to lunch i didn't go anywhere i just thought of let me sit with this woman sure. and share this pain and there was nothing that i could say to this woman but just to say it's going to be okay sure. you know mm. that just having that presence really sh showed me that there is much more midwives that are needed who are there for the women, especially in bereavement, because I really feel that most women are neglected during this time. You find that they are secluded, put it, put, put inside rooms mm. and we forget about them, you know, yeah. but having somebody, you, you know, I think I, I couldn't bring back the life, yeah. but when she felt that somebody was there with me during that journey, I think that made that journey much more easier for the woman to handle because of she had a supportive person so i really felt that this is where i can really uh, um grow this is where i can be there i can be a voice i can be an advocate mm -hmm. i can be there for the woman in such um fragile um, um, um times in their life so i think that's where my passion and my love for me before it came about this experience of the woman who had lost um, her child you were a student you were an undergrad student mm -hmm. okay. i was an undergrad student in z having to do my first delivery remember as a student you you witness you look at five deliveries mm -hmm. before you start performing a, a delivery yourself mm -hmm. so that was the first time after witnessing and falling and all that then i had to assist the woman i just came in in steve biko it was the night shift we're going off and then i was the first nurse that was there and um assisted this woman 
I, I think I think you are right when you are saying midwifery called you, um, mm. because I think I need you I need to to off ramp a bit and ask you a very silly question. But I think I want to I want to understand understand you as a person. Do you drink alcohol? Do I drink alcohol? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe occasionally, but do you go? It, it, it somehow doesn't work in my system like it doesn't like i can't handle it but maybe just one glass do you go partying like do you go to parties and stuff yeah occasionally you so you do have a social life because i'm sitting here thinking oh, she doesn't have a social life you don't sound no, like you have a Z, social life. that is you very social important <laughs> Z, that is very important you know when we are so occupied with our occupations and the things that we do we shouldn't let go of you know the us the social part of me i need friends i need family i need to go to outings i need to go to gatherings you know sometimes you are you you are so confined in a space that you even forget that you have people you know around you in your life that are there to support you that are there you know so I really think that also was something that carried me throughout my journey because of I had people that I can rely on. So I do have a social I'm, I'm, life. I'm amazed because from the time you started talking about how you were a sickly child and then in metric you decided to do the, the job, job show, shadowing. In my mind, I'm thinking which matriculant had the time to be going to the hospitals when the schools are closed. It, it's giving she doesn't have a social life. It's giving she doesn't have friends. She, she wasn't dating. She wasn't drinking alcohol. She wasn't partying. And I am so glad that you are here and you are where you are today. And you are saying to us, we need to know how to balance social life and still do great in our studies and in our careers. Because mm. often, many a times, this, this is the narrative that is there, that if you want to do well, then you, you need to cut down on, on, on social life. Like you need to, to focus on, on, on one aspect. And, and I'm wondering, I'm sitting here and wondering, how do you, how do you manage to balance the two, you know? I mean, sometimes it can be very difficult. You can have like a very demanding family and friends that wants your time and your presence and a partner. Um, but at the same time, I posted something on WhatsApp yesterday. I got it on LinkedIn. It was showing a guy, this side it says making money, this side it says um, time with family. And this guy mm. was struggling. When he tries to pull this one, this one is, is falling off. And honestly speaking, I feel like it is, it is, it is such a hard thing to maintain the balance between 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 the, the two. So to mm. hear you saying you you have implemented that in your life, it makes me so happy. And I think it, it is also liberating to the people that are watching here, Maureen, because mm. most of the times when we see certain things not manifesting in our lives, we tend to think, oh, maybe it's because I'm spending too much time with my partner or with mm. my friends, or maybe it's because I'm going out on weekends. Why am I going out if my academics or my career is not uh, progressing so thank you mm. so much for that mm. and now i want us uh, i want you to take us through uh life after uh, cum laude after up where did you go okay thank you for that i i remember i finished my bachelor's degree in 2015 yeah. Then I went, I did my comserve at um, Tony District Hospitals, one of our hospitals here in, 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 in Pretoria. Fortunately, you know, during my comserve, I was placed a lot in maternity. I was placed a wow. lot due, in, in the maternity units. So I just think that, as I'm saying again, that midwifery called me, uh, like mm -hmm. six months of my, com my, my community service, I was only in maternity units like your labor ward, your postnatal and your antenatal. Sure. Then I also got a chance to go to other areas, but I didn't develop, you know, that love for things like your, your, your trauma, mental health and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I did my community service. Then after that, we had an option of choosing uh, in, in which discipline do you want to work more in, like after your community service. Yeah. So I worked in the labor ward, also in the postnatal, for about three years. Sure. Before, 
before the university of pretoria called me back they said no maureen we wait feel you saved wait your time. wait did you say they called you yes did they had hunt they had hunted me they said <laughs> Okay, okay. Stop. all right, Rufedisa, we can all go home. She's 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 too great for us. Let's let's oh, let her go. Really? What? A university no. had hunted you? Yes. <laughs> so, so the university had hunted me, saying that um can I come and work for the university? But at that stage I couldn't work. A permanent job because i didn't have the education qualification so they could only offer me like your temporary position where they said i can come and work as a clinical facilitator so accompany the students to the uh, midwifery wards and get to teach and get to get that exposure of being uh, 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 uh of being an educator so i i really took a risk because oh see did you I say they had hunted you <laughs> they called you. <laughs> so, yes, the, I just, I just think that God has a way, you know, of doing things, you know. So he really saw that teaching was one of my passion. Like if I could teach from an undergraduate level, so teaching was really, really something that I was called for. I was called to do to impart my knowledge with the students because I, I i i find it very fulfilling standing in front of a class and sharing the experiences and the knowledge that i've managed to 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 get during my 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 my, my work in the clinical area so i didn't only work at Tswane. i found it very necessary that i needed to also get that exposure from your tertiary hospitals so I used to talk, I used to do overtime, you know, I used to be part of an agency and go and get that exposure from um, high risk hospitals, high risk tertiary, so that I can build that part of me, sure. of not only dealing with low risk patients, but also learning about your high risk conditions, your preeclampsia, your hypertension, you know, things like that. Yeah. So that's what I was doing during my my period and i also went to the private just also to see what what are, what is it that they do in private so those were the the experience that i managed to gather while while i was still uh, uh, doing my 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 working as a professional nurse so sure. that is what i managed to do so after being headhunted i took a very risky decision because of i was leaving a full-time job just to go and work a temporary position sure. that I don't even know where where I will end up. But I took that risk because I really thought that if they chose me and I didn't go into an interview or things mm -hmm. like that, it means that they see something in me. Sure. So I left my job and I went and did your clinical facilitation. You resigned at a permanent job. I resign at the government paying with you know, benefits. With all the benefits. <laughs> <laughs> I yes, hope they are yes. hearing you. I hope they are hearing you. No medical aid, no whatever. I resigned and sure. and went to be and working at a at a temporary position Come of on. just only doing clinical facilitation. So through my work, you know, so that was in 2018. So they indicated to me that if I want to grow and I want to enter into the academic sphere, mm. then I have to do my master's. Yeah. So that is when I enrolled for my master's. Okay. And I, uh, yeah, that is where I enrolled for my master's. Fortunately, mm. that time master's was coupled with your advanced midwifery. Mm. So I did my master's with the coursework in advanced midwifery. Mm -hmm. then i attained that masters in 2018 so that's how i could then put both legs into you you know your, your academic institution because for you to work at a, at a, at a, a higher um, learning institution you mm -hmm. need masters yeah. for you to be a full-time lecturer they need masters i think it's something that they're also adopting in the colleges 
yeah. where they are saying that the educators must go and do masters because it's very important for us to also look at evidence you know base our practices in current evidence and research and you know things that are out there yeah. so that nurses can also take a space at a research level you know look mm. at the current practices you know update our practices mm. make sure that whatever that we are doing is based on evidence and changing guidelines changing mm. evidences so those were the things that i managed to do in 2018 when i completed my masters then fortunately i was also funded by your nrf your national research foundation for me to do my masters mm -hmm. and then i think that's where the doors really really opened i also got to f it was my first time now being exposed to an international conference i went to the icn conference mm -hmm. that was held in singapore so that was the first time i really got to experience you know the the, the pleasure of being a clinic uh, of being a midwife specialist of being a midwife a, a educator to say that you are able to meet with other professionals mm -hmm. from from around the globe yeah. and share your, your studies and share the different you know research the gaps that you are trying to fill you know because mm -hmm. with research we really look at the problems that we are identifying in our institutions mm -hmm. and trying to find a way to to resolve those problems mm -hmm. so that is where i got to share that is where so I the first to, time you uh, went to to the icm conference it was after you completed your masters yes okay so i got the opportunity to go and present my studies okay. at that sigma um theta tau conference which is something that we really have to look at we have to talk at an international level mm -hmm. we have to present what is happening in south africa at an international platform so that we we, we also get to find ways you know as mm -hmm. to deal with the issues that we are we, we are facing you know in south africa mm -hmm. so that really opened the doors i saw me. that on uh, on 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 this year's conference that you you guys went which i hated you guys so much for going to that <laughs> conference and posting and stuff and i was like um i'm having fomo <laughs> um i saw that the registration was fifteen thousand rand. tell me are there funding opportunities for people who are not in academia um you know the you know regarding that mm -hmm. that's where we saw the need of nurses you know who are in the hospital it's very important that you align or assign or, 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 or align yourself to an organization yeah. or an association mm -hmm. because because that's where you get to apply for those conferences because from a university at least from that side we get to be funded to go to these conferences Mm -hmm. but you do have you can apply for those conferences if you are aligned to an organization or an association mm -hmm. for an example if you are to go to the international confederation um midwives conference yeah then it's very important that you are aligned with your somsa your somsa association mm -hmm. they see somsa you know your, your south african society of midwives okay. they see it as one of the associations that a sort of like a mouthpiece for yeah. our midwifery for our midwifery sector mm -hmm. so for you to go there you need to that's where you can get funding from when mm -hmm. you're aligned to that association and then and for I, think, I think maureen it goes back now i'm i'm gonna buy some me and you <laughs> then mm -hmm. you and i we had a live on on facebook on that facebook. people <laughs> didn't know about <laughs> but i think it goes back to what you guys were saying on that live right that we yes. need to create platforms for us as nurses here in the country first before mm. we can be able to go outside so mm. i hope the midwives that are, are listening to you now they mm. will go and and register themselves with the organization that you you are mentioning yes so which is also something that i was talking to i was talking to one of the the directors from the department of health yes. saying that before we can even talk about associations are we as midwives talking together are we united you know are mm. we speaking the same language True. just 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 from a departmental um level or just mm. from you know a national level yeah are we do we know what is the other midwife doing mm. again i mean how thing in mm. free state wherever mm. are we connected mm. do we have those a, a, a connections where that's where she suggested that 
we sort of need something like a midwives in the other before we can even talk about associations because a lot of people say associations they don't see what associations are doing for them you know so which is very important to first start to revive the relation in revive the connection amongst ourselves as professionals that's what she thought about from the department of health she's working at the national department of health thinking about that can be the start the, the starting point you know mm-hmm. to first see that we first communicate yeah. be in the same room mm-hmm. have the same language communicate you know mm-hmm. so that is what we, we 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 thought is especially needed if we are also to assign ourselves to associations when and when you guys other... implement that please come back and tell us and invite us ne? okay yes and then the other thing that we 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 we, oh the other association that you can be part of is dinosa yeah so dinosa dinosa is associated with your icn so international council of nurses Mm -hmm. so those are sort of conferences for all you know other other categories and other you know specialties under the you know under under our nursing yeah. So that is where you can really get sponsorships. You apply for those bursaries mm. and then you are able to go and attend the conference because it is much needed. I mean, mm. I can be representing a specialist that are working in the hospitals. True. They, they, True. they also have to be there. They mm. also have to have a voice. Mm. They also have to see what is happening in terms of evidence because mm. we find ourselves that it's only educators, you know, that are there or those that are doing research. Mm. so where are our nurses where are they our nurses our registered midwives where are they how many were you guys the south african rep- representatives this year um at the icm i think we were like was it eight maybe ten maybe maybe ten of us yeah i remember it was very yeah few, you guys yeah we were very few compared to other countries so mm-hmm. it shows that we are not connected at some level something is missing mm. that is to connect us and really make us to work as a unit True. you know mm. so i think the representation from south africa it was really 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 very poor yeah. we didn't even have a representation from our minister you know sure. and also from our our, our directorate sure. so that, yeah. that that really shows that there is still some work that needs to be done in those areas you know, I think you make a great candidate of leading that movement of midwives um, collaborating and uniting in, in, in the country. I think you would make a great figure of, of being a chairperson of, of, that, of that. So once you guys establish that platform, you need to come back and say, hey, Magenge, we are taking the direction. This is where we are going. But I want us to go back to your career now. So okay. you are at UP and you just completed your your PhD. Your your your, your no your masters, right? And mm-hmm. you attend your first ICM. Mm. Um how then did you decide that you know what I'm not done with my studies, child? I need the red gown. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so before the red gown, I then went and did my um diploma in education. Okay. because you needed that um for you to to be a lecturer you need in a nursing education okay so for me to decide i needed the red gown it was during the COVID times when i was so bored we were home you know locked down we couldn't go to universities you know education was 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 at a halt because we couldn't teach the, the students you know in the classes everything resorted to online mm-hmm. so that's when i'm like no maureen you have to do something you know you have to do something with your life i even changed jobs by then i went and worked at medunsa wow just for (laughs) just just to get another exposure of another university Mm -hmm. but that's where i i i i I really enrolled to study that was in 2021 Mm -hmm. when the covid pandemic started sure that's when i decided to go back and study my phd so but then you know with the covid it came it came with a lot of challenges i didn't know how i will collect my data i didn't know how i will reach my participants you know things Mm -hmm. like that so those were some of the challenges and the hurdles that i i i i i 
encountered during my PhD journey. Sure. I also, at that stage, I fell pregnant with my oh. daughter. So, <laughs> so I had so many things that could distract me, that could mm -hmm. make me not to focus on my studies. But I somehow feel like those hurdles were really something that pushed me to say that they asked these challenges, mm -hmm. but you have to finish in sure. the three years, you have to finish your PhD. But like, you know, we get people that demotivate you. They will tell you, I this thing, you will do it for 10 years. You will get mental illness. You will what, what, you know, mm -hmm. PhD, I don't know, is this monster in, in, I don't know if it's only in nursing, but it, it is something that is regarded as, unachievable undoable you know it's like yo what have you put yourself you know into so those were some of the things some of the things that were thrown my way to try and maybe discourage me you know but i should say that it really gave me courage to continue to continue my phd it was not easy but i think something that also really assisted me I got a grant from your your NRF, okay. which was the Black uh, Black Academic Advancement Program grant. Mm -hmm. So that was for Black young women mm -hmm. who are doing their research. So I got that grant. So that grant really assisted me by giving me um, a six months sabbatical. So that six months they allowed me to really focus on writing and pushing, you know, and pushing my studies. By six so, months sabbatical, you mean you were not working? Yeah, I was not working, but it could pay for a replacement lecturer. Oh, so okay. I could get a, a lecturer for the six months mm -hmm. that is teaching on my behalf mm -hmm. while I focus on my uh, academics. Mm -hmm. So what I should say is that when you enroll for such things, you need support. You need a supportive partner. Mm -hmm. You need a supportive, you need support from your family. Mm -hmm. support from your friends you know people need to understand that some days you will have to say no and not come to those occasions mm -hmm. not because of you're isolating yourself but because of there is a goal there's something that you are trying to achieve you know so those so those were some of the things that um came came into being that sort of almost uh, 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 de derailed me from the way but i knew that i want to finish my phd in three years I knew that I only have three years. If I want to finish in record time, I have three years. Despite COVID, despite whatever, I have three years. And they sure. say that people don't finish it. I'm going to finish it. Wow. If it means I finish it with a mental illness, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. And but you said, you said that you, you, you're not sure if um the phd struggle is only in in nursing i've seen a uh, phd graduates you see the, that that which you are saying now that it comes with mental illness and all that i see a lot of phd graduation statuses stating that i was on antidepressant and and and, and. <laughs> yeah so 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 that is so that is true z you know in my phd i think that was the most um challenging year in my life sure. because of i lost people that were close to me sure. i lost my grandmother during that time sure. so it was something that was supposed to derail me sure. but it didn't derail me i i e even wanted to finish my phd for her uh -huh. so that she can be proud of her granddaughter that she did this another thing that happened i had a very major accident z you know i I had a, a motor vehicle accident last year, October, when I was supposed to submit. Somebody just came behind my, my car and bumped my car. Unfortunately, I didn't see or I didn't look at the, the mirror. So I didn't see the car coming. So I didn't sway my car anyway. And then I had that accident. Everybody, when I came out of that accident, they like, how did you come out alive? Sure. That car, that state of the car, like 
you are not not supposed to be walking you're not supposed to be alive so 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 so, so those are some of the challenges those are some of the hurdles that i had to pass and i really saw god in my life in that time because of i had no injuries nothing but the car overturned so many times but i had nothing but just a a a, a, a minor abrasion on my neck to show that um the impact from the from, from the, the the car the and then the seat belt is the one that just you know mm-hmm. caused that abrasion so i'm trying to say that you will have people or you will have people work over time people don't want to see plus you are from Bendane. <laughs> Hey, no disclaimer. Not only then, now and even. Sure. So, so not Maureen, only then, are you but... telling me that when you, during your three-year period of PhD, you fell pregnant, you had your baby, you lost your grandmother, got in an accident that nearly became fatal for you, mm. but you still finished in record time. They, they, there's still so many things that I can count. You know, I got ill. I got admitted for 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 two weeks. You know, I got I got so many discouragement. I got so many people saying that you know you can't do this. I got so many negativities. I lost friends. I lost family. You know, I, I you you know you pe- people even you know you like you lose even your support system. People that you knew they are in your corner people were no longer in your corner so what i want to say is that there are so many challenges that can be brought along your way of reaching your target or your goal but do not allow that to derail you sure. from what you want to achieve do not allow it to because de- usatan corner like he works overtime and his people work overtime but you know that god is also there you know that god is there for her for 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 for, for his children and he will see to finish like those things really really could have made me to say i i give up Mm. or i you know what this is not doable Mm. but in the midst of all the difficulties i don't know how i found i found strength but you really get strength i i don't know how i was strengthened but i want to think that it was god and i want to think that it was also the support from my mentors, you know, pre- people like Prof. Mulawuzi, mm-hmm. people like a uh, 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 Prof. Uh, uh, Beu, you know, you need those people who are going to support you. You need those people who are going to say, we have you, you, we have you, my child. This is mm-hmm. doable. This is, you know, mm-hmm. you, you need such people who can make you see your end goal, your end vision in sure. place. So I found myself even typing while I'm at the hospital. I'm like, oh, but I'm gonna do this. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know Z, but I'm just stubborn. I'm just saying to myself, you cannot derail me. You cannot oh my God. come and want to disturb my vision just because of somebody, you know, is having that thing. How can she do it? She's coming from a village. You know, who do you think you are? Valid. Mm. Hey, but. I found myself looking at the end goal. I found myself looking at the end result. Sure. That I'm gonna do this. It is possible. I'm gonna pierce through whatever. Yeah. Delay is not denial. So those were some of the things that really carried me. They were supposed to break me, but I really conquered. You, pierced I through. Got you know, sense. you used the word I pierced through. Like that that is exactly I think it is it's such an accurate word to use because mm. you literally pierced through stuff mm. stuff that personally i'm sitting here as you are narrating and i'm thinking nah nah if it was me i this was the point where i would have said okay i'm out mm. your 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 courage mm. and faith that's what people mm. are, are saying on on the comment sections um mm. it's amazing you, you you are yeah. so goal orientated and you you even taking me back to the marine who got who was sickly and then decided to go job shadow at the hospital i mean i'm thinking me in metric all i was doing was to buy spa to after school that's it and you you went to the hospital to job shadow and see what's happening in 
in hospitals. As I've, I've been listening to you narrating your story, I see how goal orientated you are. You mm. focus on the target. I love mm. that about you so, so much. Mm. And I think I'm taking mm. that uh, mm. from you because Maureen, it is so easy to get distracted from mm. the target. You, mm. It is so easy. So many things are distracting us mm. from the target. So many. Uh, mm. And to hear you saying you pierced through because you, you knew your mm. end goal, you knew the vision. Ah, man. I'm inspired. Mm. Yeah, so I really had the end goal in mind. And I really think, I, you know, I named my daughter Murungwa which yeah. means angel meaning that somewhere along the journey i needed an angel to, to 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 take me through to make me surpass these battles i needed a murungwa i needed oh an God. angel from god i needed him to give me strength you know to pierce through because of you get so many challenges i mean the actually being young is like now you are like a victim of your own success yep because Mm, because the fact that I'm young, I'm seen as somebody who doesn't have potential or I'm seen as somebody mm. who who can't, who do you think you are to get a, a PhD at such a young age? Mm. Like, you know, you get such negativity and you're like, what is happening? Because and of, even now, mm, you are still receiving it, right? Mm, yes, yes. Even now, mm. being ha having received this PhD, having received this honor or this PhD and being uh, uh, um, uh, titled or labeled as the youngest PhD holder at the University of Pretoria to get a PhD in the nursing department and also being endorsed and being uh, uh, spoken about by Dr. Blade Nzimande who also mm -hmm. shared that you you get you get to think that this is a victory for where I'm working for, for, for working like where, where I'm working for your department yes they would see this as wow we have achieved you mm -hmm. you know you know mm -hmm. that thing that a mother has mm -hmm. when 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 the daughter or the son has achieved something mm -hmm. you are like oh wow the whole like, family becomes excited because yes. you are representing that family in the yes. world yes but but what I'm getting now is like who does she think she is uh, knowing that she has gotten a PhD at a young age, who did, does she think she will rule, you know, things sure. like that. And I do not want to rule anywhere. Yes. I want to hold hands with the older generation, you know, with my seniors. Instead of, I don't want to take any position. I want to hold hands. I want to learn from them. I want to be mentored. I want to be shown the way because of you get people saying that, our profession has gone to dogs or mm -hmm. there is no future for our nursing profession, mm -hmm. but they are still not sharing with us on how do we keep this status? Because remember now, as, as I was making that illustration that says that a mother becomes proud of mm -hmm. the daughter doing good. Now, if we are not doing good, who is to blame? The parent. The parent, which is our <laughs> seniors, which is our managers. They don't see this. They really think that we want to take uh, ownership, or we want to take leadership, you know, they will become irrelevant. But mm -hmm. that is not the case. Mm -hmm. We're saying as young people, we want to learn from you. Yes. We want to we, we want to go to spaces that were never filled before. We mm -hmm. want to be part of the table. We want to pierce through, you know, mm -hmm. spaces that were never pierced through, you know, mm -hmm. which which was also something that made me very angry at the at the clinic, at the hospital. You know that they do this thing of saying um, you have to wait to be in line to go to school. You have to wait five years or what? Yeah. You know, as a registered nurse, you mm. must wait for five years before you are in the line of being taken to school. Mm. That is not nice. That is not good at all. Because I think, somebody... I think another thing, Maureen, and mm. I, love, I love that you are repeating what you are saying because I think you've said it in a live before here, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. You said that we don't want to take people's positions. And mm. I, I asked this question at the Unsung Hero on that panel because that was a panel of business people and corporate mm. managers. And I asked that question, I was asking the managers because I needed, I needed them 
to make us understand what is it that they need from us how should we approach them so that they don't feel intimidated by us so that they don't feel like we want their positions we don't want their positions but we want them when they are no longer in the system the the excellency of the work that they are doing continues mm. or mm. even becomes better because they would have taught us um well and i wish you know Sizuzile is here and Sizuzile is a senior mm. manager and i mm. wish um managers can be like her we said this to her i think it was a few days ago that mm. we wish we can multiply her you see she's here right Mm. she's hearing our concerns she's listening to us mm. she's not even saying anything she's hearing our concerns and i mm. think this will assist her to know how to handle young people in her workplace and she will know what young people want but because mm. most managers don't want to find themselves listening to what young people are saying or what young people are thinking they then don't know our intentions when we are coming to them to ask for assistance maybe they think oh this one is gonna try to replace me and i will become irrelevant but managers like sis zuzile they look at us and they want to empower us because mm. she knows that when she leaves the system her good mm. work and her excellence needs to continue but these mm. managers who don't who wants to keep us at an arm's distance the question mm. is the good that they are doing now who's going to continue it when they are no longer in the system because eventually the system will kick them out if they look at us now and they feel ah. Oh, you are too young it doesn't matter if you got your, your your phd a phd that most people don't get in three years the fact that you got it in three years should be saying you are extraordinary and you are capable but they mm. are choosing to say no we are keeping you at an arm's distance how will that help the system sure yeah i don't know sure i don't know but those are. Um... We, we 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 have a few of our sis zuzile mm. i mean from from my own university i can talk about prof mulawudzi sure. because she wants to see young people doing good you know young people taking up spaces and taking up platforms that before they were seen as you know a, 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 a territory or a place where you know that is so difficult for to young people to be in policy you know things like that mm -hmm. she wants us to take those spaces but how many of them do we have you know sure. that are really are supporting and supporting dreams of young people but i i just hope that one day our voices will be heard and our work i am just happy that our work is speaking for us yes. our work is speaking volumes yes. you know our work they get to see that we are not just saying that we want to be mentored we actually also doing something you know we're yes. trying to change the status quo we're trying to 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 what can i say we we are we are trying to make sure that whatever the work that we are doing speaks volume you know mm -hmm. on our behalf. we are putting so in the work maureen mm -hmm. yes we so, are putting in the work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, how 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 tell me how how does how, the 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 experience that you are getting at at your workplace currently where not not everyone actually majority is not celebrating you how yeah. does that make you feel and also isn't it taking energy from you you know like isn't it making you to say ah i'm just i'm just done i'm i'm done trying do you ever get that feeling where you feel like you're oh, like no i can't i can't like this is too much negativity. I can't, I, ca I just can't keep on. Do you ever get that, that feeling? Hey, I don't know how, how I am wired or my system, how it is. I actually find courage from that. Sure. Okay. If I'm getting so much negativity, meaning there's something right, or there's mm -hmm. something that is so profound from what mm -hmm. I want to do, you know, if somebody mm -hmm. wants to, to stop or wants to, you know, put that negativity meaning they are seeing the greatness mm -hmm. in you they see the potential you know they see the good that can come from what you are trying to bring so mm -hmm. i actually find it as an encouragement okay no. i'm gonna strive i'm gonna strive i'm gonna you know i'm gonna prove myself mm -hmm. worthy i'm gonna show them Uri, this is what i am capable of doing but it's not nice yeah always getting negativity always getting 
um shut down in everything that you do you are getting opposition you know it's really mm. not nice if really they were to create environments because right now even waking up and going to work you just feel like oh the environment mm. is not really conducive you you mm. worry and you think about do they really even value the things that i'm bringing to the table sure. but what what i what i what i found so profound z is that you know that that thing of being the young nurse and whatever was shared in my department in school but i didn't get a lot of you know congratulations and what what and what what and then this other day i went to steve biko i was accompanying my students and then there was a nurse who was working in that ward she says hey dr moose i'm like yeah how do you know me she's like who doesn't know you i'm like here yeah? what do you mean so it shows Uri, the people that are around you might not oh. celebrate what you are doing but the impact is not for these people sure and what you are doing is not for your current circle it is for those who are external i don't know how do people mm -hmm. who are not who who are external are the ones who are your cheerers mm -hmm. are the ones who see the good in, in, in what you are doing mm -hmm. are the ones that see the passion in what you are doing are the ones that see the impact in what you are doing at your circle people that are surrounding you Uri, how is it Uri? they don't see that and I it's, think we need it's sad. so that you can push through Mm. I think sometimes you need those obstacles, you need those people so that who the thing that you're doing for, you do not doing it for them. Mm. The, those who are there in the exterior, those who are in the external are the ones that see really what is it that you are trying to bring or what is it the impact that you're trying to bring. Sure, Maureen. Oh, yeah. And I, I asked you this particular question because I think you know that as nurses we experience so many barriers in the workplace when it comes to progression of any kind mm. currently nurses are trying to go back to school and managers don't want to write um recommendation letters <laughs> and I, I you get a lot of nurses who are saying i'm, I'm gonna give up I'm, I, 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 this is it and other nurses are even scared of taking risk and resigning your your life like your story that you narrated maureen is gonna be a source of strength for us as nurses who are who are passionate about um developing ourselves in our respective field i feel like even for myself when I, when I, I feel like oh no i can't take it anymore I, i'm tired me i maureen I, me i get tired and i'm like oh i'm out no no so i think i will always go back to this live because it's going to be on youtube and just remember that i always need to focus on the goal focus on the target and 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 keep pushing even though the negative energy is is not nice to receive but always use it as a fuel to become who i'm meant to be sure yeah it's just that we we do not see it that what we are doing is not for people who are around us Sure. I mean, the, the things that you, the life that you are having, you know, the, 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 the stories that you share with us, there are so many people out there mm, true. That, whose lives you are changing. The people that you are around, they might be thinking, oh, at work I was telling, uh, they were telling, oh, how busy got the vibes, all those things. But I was like, those things are what is needed out there. True, true. I, I, it's funny how you are mentioning this because um, in nursing school, I wasn't really a favorite of a lot of students, right? Um, and it's funny how now they want the information that I'm sharing here, but because it's me who is sharing it, they don't want to come and join these lives, you know? Mm -hmm. So what you are saying, I think it actually happens everywhere where people don't want to grow. If if I'm in your circle and I want to grow and I want you to grow, because if, if you want to grow, you will want yourself in a circle of people who are growing. Mm. If I want you to grow and we mm. are in the same circle, I will always mm. celebrate you. Mm. But if we are in the same circle, but I don't want to grow and when you are all about growth, mm. then I will have a problem with celebrating you mm. because you are showing me of my inadequacy. Mm. So that I feel like 
there is something that lacks in the people that don't want to celebrate other people mm -hmm. there is something that lacks in them mm -hmm. and you becoming and you growing you are echoing whatever that is in their inside mm -hmm. which is inadequate mm -hmm. um as as young nurses may 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 we learn from you um, may we learn not to give up because mm -hmm. your your journey shows um how you never gave up i don't even think it's just your phd you you never gave up and mm. i love how you listen to the voice of god you are god led mm. in terms of your career progression from how you mm. left a permanent job which is something that that most people here are so scared of doing the dms that Maureen, my dms i will show you when we meet one day people mm. are scared of leaving department of health and i i look at them and i think you Yes, Nisa, yes, yes, Nisa Zokala. Yeah. But I am, I am, I am truly, truly in, yeah. in, inspired by you. Um, can you please tell us what your study, your PhD study was about? So, um, my PhD study, I was looking at, um, I was developing a framework um, for so what I realized during my training as a midwife, I realized that a lot of women, they come to the ward, you know, they are carrying bottles. In the bottles, they things like Isi Lambez, you know, yeah. things like that to show mm -hmm. that women do consult not only the health facilities, yes. but do go to your traditional healers, to your yeah. traditional birth attendants for information or for support that we don't know about from the True. from the health care from the health facility side so mm -hmm. i wanted so i asked the question of looking at is there a point where we as our westernized midwives can mm -hmm. we work together with your traditional birth attendants because mm -hmm. i'm telling you women do consult both they but do. however if we keep a blind eye on the fact that the woman utilizes both systems then there is some way where one system will be compromised True. and there's some way where we're not going to achieve what we're looking at in terms of our sustainable developmental goal number four mm -hmm. where we're talking about eradicating or reducing maternal death and also neonatal death mm -hmm. you know so if we do not have these two systems they are existing they're but they're not existing they're existing in parallel mm -hmm. and they are not integrated Mm. then they will be they will we will not be able to reach these goals that we 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 we're talking about sure. so i was i went to the traditional birth attendants and asked them what is it do they think about in terms of working with our western midwives then i also went to the midwives and said what do you think about collaborating with our traditional uh, 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 um, birth attendants mm. so what i really found is that the two systems they 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 can't work together as an uh, an integrated system mm -hmm. however what the healthcare system was saying is that they can recognize that this traditional health system is there mm -hmm. but they can only recognize recognize it in form of regulation mm -hmm. regulating their practice we need to know what is it that they do yeah. what is it they do for the mother in terms of the antenatal Mm -hmm. intrapartum and also after delivery in the postnatal we sure. want to know what is the services that they do and mm -hmm. we have also have to know the scope of practice what is it wow. that they can do and what is it that they can't do and we also looked at they need to be trained because mm -hmm. most of them you know it is a calling you know things mm -hmm. like that and who is training them mm -hmm. you know because of a, 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 a maternity there's so many complications that can arise you know a, 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 a delivery can just complicate just like that without you even preparing mm -hmm. so we want to prepare them and want to train them so that they can identify when a woman is at risk they don't remain with the woman they send the woman to the hospital where she will be getting more help where they are access to your 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 theaters your uh, skilled doctors your skilled midwife so those are the things that we're looking at and also referral when should they refer now a patient to your healthcare system so that is what i was looking at which is a, something that is an area which is not mostly looked into because mm -hmm. of we feel like they are there and we are here mm 
Mm, sure. Whereas we're dealing with the same patient at the end of the day. True. So somehow these systems need to complement one another. Because mm. even after birth, the woman will go back to the mm. grandmother and say, yo, um, or yeah. you know, that thing. And mm. uh, uh, even though, you know, in the medical system, we find that we do not have definitions or, 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 or we can't clearly say what is Ibala in, 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 in our medical terms. Mm. They just say it is the red spot. Yeah. Or, you know, the, the rigoni or what they just say sunken fontanel, mm. which which are some of the things that are sacred to our cultures. You know, yeah. it's something that we don't take lightly because of Ibala. A baby can die because of Ibala. Because if mm. it can travel and come to the fontanel, then the baby can even pass on, which are things that we can't let go of because of everything has be, be, become westernized. Yeah. So I was looking at ways as to how can we look at the culture part of our midwifery care because women are coming from communities. Women come from a certain culture and women mm -hmm. come, they practice certain cultural practices. Sure. So right now our Western system does not embody or does not take care of that cultural component of a woman. True. You know, the care that we give doesn't tap into this culture component of the woman. So which is what I looked into that let us recognize, let us train, let us have a scope of practice, let us have guidelines wow. as to what is it that they can do for maternal and child health care and what is it that they cannot do. So that is what I was looking into. So it's such a beautiful topic and everyone um, is definitely um, agreeing with me. It is not only saving the mother and, and the child, but it, it also preserves the culture of us as, as, as black people in, in, in South Africa. Yo, that is, that is such a beautiful topic. Yo, it is such a beautiful topic. Mm -hmm. um, before I can, I can ask people to join us and, and have a conversation with you, um, I, I want, I want to, to, to ask, which direction are you, are you taking? Are you going into policy making? Or are you going into, uh, who's that professor, Dr. Pageng, vice chancellor kind of situation? <laughs> you, sound, you sound so much like a policy maker to me. I don't know why. <laughs> a policy influencer. <laughs> hey, I don't know, but I really aspire to do change. So wherever, so wherever I am planted, either as an HOD, or, the, or, or as a research chair, or as a vice chancellor, wherever I think I, wherever I am planted, oh. I would want to see growth. I would want to see myself, you know, excelling. So sure. I would, I, I would take note of the 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 policy thing that you just said. <laughs> I know, <laughs> like I, I I I see it, but we are definitely watching you. <laughs> Um, we, we are watching you closely and we know we are still yet to celebrate you. We know this is just the beginning. I'm going to ask you guys to come in and say something to Maureen, ask questions, comments. Please request Dani Betunana and join in. Yeah, can we start with Sizuzi Lebatum? Sizuzi Le, please say something to Maureen. <laughs> Hi Maureen. Hi Maureen. Hi Maureen. You want me to speak? I I just wanted to sit down and listen to you. You know, you are a young, uh, inspirational person. You remind me of my youth, but you know that we cannot all go the right way, the the, the same way. We all have been destined in different ways. You know, when we were starting to talk, I was thinking. The same things that happened to you, it was nearly the same things even that has happened to me, but our mm. journeys, they are not the same. So I'm really proud yeah. of you, of where you are today, you know. I always, I, I was telling the team that I'm leading now because what I'm trying to do now is to develop the young nurses to be in the training department, you know, so that they can be able to, 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 to develop themselves um, I'm tired of working with the older nurses, as if you are here, because <laughs> I just love the younger ones. I'm joking. I love everybody. <laughs> yeah, including the older ones. Yeah. So, but the, the, the main thing that we have to change on is to how we treat the young nurses. 
they are our mm -hmm. future nurses our profession mm -hmm. we have to live it with them so that they can see mm -hmm. us as leaders that have led them the right way so i just want to say to you dr maureen well done you have done well to yourself you are very inspirational to the young uh, 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 nurses like i'm saying i told my team guys you must study you have to study i just want to see you somewhere i just want you know i want to see you where I, I i've seen some of the young doctors being there so yeah just well that and i love your attitude think me and you we are the same whatsapp group i don't care you know me you say whatever that you want to say i don't care you appreciate me i, I you know I, you appreciate me I, I i really accept and i'm happy about that you don't appreciate me i don't work for you i work for god i am here to do god's work so i really love your attitude don't my not everybody will celebrate you my dear there are people that they don't like where you are you know so i just want to share something that happened i was um a, 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 a facilitating the art guidelines on wednesday and then so uh, um i was not in the in the in and then they were like when i said i'm gonna come and do the facilitation they said who is this one some of the people were called who is this Zuzile? who's gonna be facilitating to the doctors you know i wear my shoulders up i went mm -hmm. up there and then i facilitated they tried to intimidate me i mess i mesmerized them ah, i'm a nurse and yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so you know what we are not gonna be intimidated by anybody mm -hmm. and this profession we are going to grow it oh, so i'm really yeah. happy to see you as young nurses being so inspirational the way you are well done girl you know i i am really so proud of you thank you <laughs> we love you so much Zuzile. we love you so so much and thank you for always taking your time and be here with us we truly appreciate it mm. thank you z i will really i will definitely support you oh, but don't oh, call hello. me <laughs> okay thank you hi Omoholo. Oh, hi, can you hear me? Hi, ma'am. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, my word. I'm so, um, I'm gobsmacked. Um, Dr. Maureen, she's my lecturer. You see her like day in and day out in the department, but you don't really realize the excellence that's working amongst you. So it's been, it's been incredible just to, to sit here and hear a story. Um, I think my question is, what advice would you give to your younger self, like let's say you could go back about 10, 15 years back, what advice would you give to, to your younger self? Like what mistakes, if there are any, would you agree? What would you do different? Mm -hmm. If there's anything you would have done different? Such a beautiful question. I, I like asking this question to my mentors as well. <laughs> yeah, what would, you, what would you have done different? Or is there anything that you feel like now in our final year, something that we can do, not necessarily to like accelerate, to like reach where you are, but what gaps have you seen? Now you have gone through the entire process and you know, okay, no, if you take this route, you're just, you're taking a harder route or, could, are there any advice or things that you would feel like you would have done differently to to reach where you are? Yeah, thank thank you so much, Omohola, my student. She's now in fourth year. Wow, doing so well, doing so well. She's almost going to the community, to the facilities. Wow. Thank you so much. So I think what I would have like what I would have done is to knock on more doors to seek mm. to seek more help i mean omoholo we, we we are there for you but somehow you know as a student you just feel like i'm alone mm. Mm. I, I i i don't have anybody that i can talk to but 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 you can find that you you can know your passion or you can know what is it that you you know the stream that you need to follow by just talking or by just reaching out so i just feel maybe that because i i've always been so res reserved you know i'm just focusing on my academics mm. i'm just you know, i was like that girl you know mm. just books 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 only but if i could have 
put myself in channels or put myself in 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 spaces where i was more vocal i was more you know taking up those spaces asking for mentorship you know asking to be guided mm. i think those were some of the things that um i could have maybe learned but i don't really think there is something that i could have changed because i really do think that i had put my focus on this is what i want to achieve and by this time then i planned for that no matter what came my way didn't shake me to say you are not gonna reach this because they tell you the statistics you know they try and make things look real or hey bona mama has been taking 10 years or whatever whatever years and but that is that person's reality it doesn't mean it's my reality you know so i just feel like i could have maybe assigned myself or aligned myself with um people that are doing so well at a mm -hmm. at an earlier stage but i just think that timing i think it's god's timing if now is the time where i need to be vocal then this is the time this is the actual time but what i like from you omokolo you already are taking up space you already are you're already already doing so well in terms of your studies so look at, so 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 look at what is what does omokolo want what do you want at the end of the day do you see yourself in academia do you see yourself you know having your own practice i mean right now we're talking about nest in like nest entrepreneurship which is something that is a a, a, a buzzword now so mm. look at it what is it that you are aligned with what is it that you want to find yourself reaching mm. and start aligning yourself to those people start asking for mentorship start talking to those people because i mean you can't travel a road that you are not sure you need somebody who has already traveled the road to show you to give you the navigation to give you a map or okay this is how you do it so align yourself with people that you they they sort of uh, uh, are speaking to what you Omoholo is all about and sure. to everybody um okay ma'am i have one more question i think um like for me i find it difficult because sometimes i feel like you enter spaces but as like a young like students sometimes like you don't know how to like utilize your voice like maybe i'm in a room and there are lectures deans whatever and it's like okay this is the plot like this is your platform it's your time to shine but then how would you say like how do you navigate utilizing your voice like is it does it come with does it come with experience or being in a space with other professionals that are i don't know who have, could have gone before you or aligning yourself with people who can help you utilize your voice because i feel like sometimes you are like placed good the opportunities there and like you grab it but you don't fully like utilize it you don't i don't know like you don't know how to navigate does that like come with like you say like getting a mentor and being guided and not just taking the road yeah just taking the road on your own traveling yeah, the road on your one. own yeah i actually wanted to 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 give it to you because i mean z is traveling on roads and you know <laughs> but, but 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 what i just wanted to say omoholo you use your voice for like you don't just voice you, like you use it for good purpose you know mm -hmm. sometimes others are using it to challenge and to so use it for a good purpose mm -hmm. to to build you to make you grow but i think nest z in in this case she's the one who has been breaking down those silos i think please take it thank you in it actually starts exactly at your your, your first response maureen you gave her the perfect response mm -hmm. You need to identify where you fit in, because if you're going to find, if you can throw me in midwifery, one of the reasons I don't hang out with Kathy, Sosane, Le, uh, Maureen and Sbabato at the same time, <laughs> I hang out with all four of them together, it's because I know they are experts in midwifery, and if I'm sitting with them, I'm going to sound like an idiot or I'm going to sound like I'm not intelligent. Like my voice is going to be irrelevant when I'm with yeah. all of them, right? Uh, but if you can throw me in, in a space where they are speaking HIV, best believe I'm going to learn and I'm going to teach, right? I'm going to find confidence. If you can, you can put me in a space where nurses needs to show up for themselves. I will be able to do that because I am about that. 
So how did I get here? How did I get in a space where I know how to grab an opportunity and fully utilize it? I got into it by identifying what am I passionate about? So it goes back to what Maureen said to you. And it's something that I'm always saying on here that as student nurses, it is time for you to identify what is it that you love in the profession? Where do you fall? The moment you know what you love, because once you love something, you also start seeing uh, the gaps around that particular thing because you, it's, you are sort of scrutinizing it, looking at it at, in, in different angles, right? I, I personally don't know anything that is happening in midwifery because I'm never scrutinizing midwifery. But when it comes to HIV, I know how patients are treated in the facilities. I know how patients are living in their own household. I know so much about patients who are living with HIV compared to midwifery. And that came, I built it um, uh, from the time when I identified what I love and I worked on it. So what your lecturer says to you, that take this moment to look at what is available in nursing and what is it that you love uh, in nursing. And then you identify the people who are in that space and align yourself with those people. Uh, there's a, a video that I posted where I was at the Unsung Hero and then I asked them a question that Maureen Noko and I uh, were, spoken up, were speaking about a few weeks ago and, and, and one of, of, of the people that responded said that as, as young people, when you are approaching a mentor or a, a sponsor, you don't just say, hi, my name is Anele. I just wanted to say hi. No, you go and say, hey, my name is Zanella. I'm passionate about HIV. I, 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 I have a voice and I want to utilize it in HIV, but I don't know how to utilize it. And because this person has experience in speaking in HIV, she will tell you how to do it. And then you learn from that particular person. But if you yourself don't know what you love, that person cannot help you identify what you love. I don't know if we make sense. I'm going to give over to Usi Zuzile. Uh, she wants to say something to you as well. Okay, uh, thank you, Z. So, um, what, I, what I have noticed during the profession and also, um, as I did mention one time, that um, I have an experience of working in the public and also working in the private. So, what, what uh, the mistake that is happening in our profession is the matter of looking in the money. So, most of our nurses, they are looking on what is paying. Yeah. on uh, instead of looking at, on what a person is passionate about you know mm -hmm. so that that is the main 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 challenge and i have seen uh, uh, um i have seen most of our nurses mm -hmm. they just want to go and work in icu mm -hmm. you go and work in icu what is it that you are doing there in icu mm -hmm. uh, I, I i i i remember the time i went and do trauma because me, I'm an emergency person. So you put me in an emergency department, I will definitely do a, 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 a miracles for you. You put me in maternity in Dr. Maureen's uh, department, you are frustrating me. You frustrate <laughs> me more than anything, you know, but you give me that, I will definitely do that. And then with ICU, uh, I, I ended up enjoying it because it, ga it gave me what I never thought I will really know about it you know so mm -hmm. when i was there i could see that the people that are working in icu if you are here working in icu please do yourself a favor and try by all means to learn because what i've observed in icu people are nursing machines more than patients sure. so they are going there because icu is paying when they go to the agencies, they will just go there and then just register to go in ICU because the rate of the ICU and the rate of the normal ward, they are not the same. So the advice to you young nurses that are here, look mm. on your passion. Yeah. What is it that you are passionate about? Mm. On your four years of your training, while you are busy rotating in the, all the departments, look where you feel comfortable. Guys, some of us, we went to nursing um, because of our financial uh, 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 challenges mm -hmm. uh, uh, in our families. But mm -hmm. when we arrived there, we fell in love with the profession. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. if we didn't feel, fell in love with the profession, mm -hmm. 
I would have left nursing long time ago because mm -hmm. I didn't love it. But but because already the time I was there, then I fell in love with it. If you were like, if you are like me, you went to nursing because at least nursing is the one that can be able to make you to 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 let you get paid while you are still training because of the financial issues. If you feel that your passion is not there, it's better to exit. Otherwise, tomorrow. The, next, the, 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 the new generations, they are going to be talking about you the way we are talking about the old nurses now. So let you not be the one that will be carrying the same challenges that we are carrying now. Yeah. So if you feel that you don't find any passion to any mm. department, it's your time to exit. Ah. And if you see that there is a passion, please concentrate on your passion. And even when you complete, tell them, I'm not comfortable working in maternity. Mm -hmm. I'm not comfortable working in the mm -hmm. medical world. This is my passion. This is where you will see my 100% performance. I don't think they will deny you on that. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. No, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, Anazi. I think... Yeah, that was really well explained and well rounded up. So I think just now moving forward, it's identifying um those specific starting wards or disciplines that are more drawn to and just really hammer in it. Um so yeah, but I'm excited and oh Dr. Musi have really inspired me. I think <laughs> you're a walking legend. <laughs> it's yeah. insane. It's, so uh, uh, I think yeah, I'll be coming yeah, to your office. I just wanted to say, Omokolo, we, we've really seen you as one of the students that are... Have you seen? I sent you a message recently. I've selected... I saw your email, man. I was months. like, I'm still... Yes. I'm still... I'm still yes. trying to absorb. I was like, like what? You, we see compassion in you. We see this forces qualities to show that we are seeing you. So it's time that you also, you know, take those spaces. We have acknowledged you take those uh, spaces but thank you so much for coming to the live. thank you ma'am thank you tabelo tabelo i tabelo is one of the people that i feel this live really touched her um i've been seeing her interactions so 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 much hello sissy how are you i'm good how are you i'm fine are you in lesotho by chance no Okay. No, Tabelo, she's in Venda, I'm sure. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, you know that. All right, okay. I'm seeing the name. These are my people. <laughs> I'm gonna let you to 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 shoot your shot at Dr. Musi. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, yeah, this is motivating because currently, I am doing my specialty in midwifery. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those that during the undergrads, honestly speaking, I didn't like maternity. I was yeah. afraid. <laughs> I was afraid because when I graduated, I was, when I graduated my undergrads, I was 20. And then after that, they, there was that thing of saying we no longer, they're no longer having any intake for specialty. So somehow I had to wait for a year. Mm -hmm. Then the following year, I decided to register. The first year I'm telling you, it was horrible because managers didn't understand what's happening. Somehow I need to actually spend 48 hours of not sleeping, going to work, going to class, coming back, going to work, going to class. So it was horrible up until this year, whereby they then understood everything to say, now you can go to school, just give us the timetable. And then should you need any assistant, then you need to do it because we are seeing how passionate you are. Oh. But other than that, I'm motivated by Dr. Musi because the thing is, I'm really not into the bedside nursing. Mm then currently i have also actually the i was called by one of the i think probably dr musi know him prof i'm sure she yes. knows her yeah, she was from from yes mm. yes so then she then they contacted me then they said i should register for at first they were just asking do you have education then i said i don't have education and then they said uh we have seen your age you're still young but we want you to do masters next year 
so that at this time you will just be a a preceptor for a period you'll be a preceptor while doing your masters and then you need to do education you must try by all means because even suddenly they were advising me to say you rather do it with other universities so that you can then accumulate both at once yeah. and then they were like we they are there for me they will support me but you must be ready for the pressure that comes with academics it's not going to be easy mm -hmm. they were honest with me like mm -hmm. what she's saying they were so honest because they were like the pressure that comes with what you want to embark on then it's not easy but if you really want to do it and the 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 passion that you are showing then you can do it because even in undergrads i got distinction in midwifery but i didn't like labor work. The only time I'll go to labor ward, it was when the lecturers are there during the undergrads. Mm -hmm. Then when ComSev comes, I was placed in maternity. They didn't rotate me throughout. So mm -hmm. it was just horrible. And then somehow mm -hmm. I had to fall in love with maternity. Mm -hmm. Then uh, it was a, last year. Then I went to the nursing service manager. I was like, I want transfer i feel like i need more challenge i need tertiary exposure mm. then i they were refusing me with cross transfer then i went to the hospital that i wanted to go then i went to hr i went to nursing service manager said i want to come to this hospital and i want to work in this ward mm. i want high care labor ward only mm. and i don't want any other thing so then they were like okay it's fine submit your cv bring z83 then i submitted everything then i was taken to that hospital then Things went well. I went to school. They they wrote that letter without giving me any problem. Wow. They wrote the letter. Then they gave me the study leave. And then now already they have approved the study leave for my master's. Wow. Yeah. So then, nice. yeah, it was just that. So otherwise, I'm just here being motivated, yeah. looking forward to say, you know what? I also need that PhD before the age of 30. Yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> you must get it before 29. Before 29. Yeah. Because she, yeah, she the target is before yeah, 29. That's the, tag, that's the target. So, because honestly speaking, what she's saying, the issue, the, the stigma behind the issue of saying PhD is not for the weak, all those yeah. things that they say. That's yeah. what I've heard. And yeah. somehow I was like, so then that means if they're saying it's this tough, Mm. And then that means I won't go there. I don't want problems. I don't want to get sick, all those other things. But other than that, but because she came out, she explained her journey. I'm mm. so motivated that I can do this and I will do this because even now it was somehow hard because if I survived the first year of PG deep, then I was like, I can survive because I could mm. spend sometimes a week of not resting. You need to write, you need to go to work. And now you're working in tertiary hospital. It's busy. It's all those complications. Abruptio mm -hmm. after abruptio, eclampsia after mm -hmm. eclampsia. So then after that, you manage to go to class. You attend up until one o'clock. You come back, you drive back. Mm -hmm. So I was like, then I think I can do it. And thank yeah. you so much, Dr. Musi, for, for the motivation. And Z, thank you so much. You, you know, this platform, I'm telling you, you just taking out that negativity that people have about nursing that mm -hmm. nurses don't study nurses this and that but otherwise mm -hmm. with this platform we are growing i'm telling you even those that really saw nursing to say ah nurses nurses do only bedside nursing they do mm -hmm. and you just taking out everything to us to say no Oh, you, even if you do nursing, you can still be someone else. And even if you do nursing, you can still be a doctor. She's a doctor. Mm. <laughs> She's a doctor now and not by profession, mm. a doctor, NQF mm. level 10. So mm. you can imagine, you can imagine. So I'm telling you, uh, I'm so motivated. I'm one of those that with this one, I just said an alarm. I was like, you know what? I don't want to miss this one. I'm from work. I'm from work, but when I came back from work, I was like, let me bath. I don't want to miss this opportunity because mm. I want to find out more what's happening. What, how mm. did she do it? Because mm. I want to go there. Mm. So otherwise, thank you so much, Dr. Musi. Thank you so much, Z, for the opportunity. I'm telling you, you are keeping us, like you just motivating mm -hmm. us nonstop. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Maureen, do you want to say anything to your Mkaya? 
no <laughs> no but thank you so much mkaya for setting the alarm you know and for coming and being part of this journey I, I I I'm just here to try and show everybody that it is possible, mm -hmm. you know. So where there is a will, there is a way. Mm -hmm. So I also wanted the the there is this a uh, uh, quote that I have from Maya from Maya Angelo mm -hmm. saying that you may encounter a lot of defeats, but don't be defeated, sure. you know. And I and I also think that we are more stronger when we you know when you've been defeated and you're on your knees. Mm -hmm. that's where you get your strength mm -hmm. that's where you get the opportunity to pray and really uh, ask god for 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 direction mm -hmm. so just know that god's plans always prevail mm -hmm. so no matter what god will always see us through he has plans for us plans to prosper us and to give us a future so thank you so much tabero and i really hope that you you have your goal in mind and you really achieve what you have said for yourself. Thank you so much. I think, I think I love what she said. She said that um, a lot of people were saying, oh, PhD, it's highly impossible. What were the challenges and all that? And she's saying this life, you just demystified all of that. Um, I think the fact that she's echoing it, I know a lot of people are saying it, but the fact that she's saying it out loud, it says that you and I, we did our job, we did like, we achieved the goal for this particular life. Ndivo is a student from the University of Johannesburg, if I'm not mistaken. Guys, I try to, to know you all by name. Ndivo, <laughs> hi. Your mic is muted, Sissy. We can't hear you. Oh, okay. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello, <laughs> Uh, and hello, Dr. Maureen. Thank you for um, granting my request to join the live. Hello? Can yes, you guys we hear can me? hear you. Do you have a question for Maureen or a comment? Yes. Uh, firstly, I would just like to say uh, thank you, Nasi, and also Dr. Maureen for the motivation. It has been great. You know, I was just sitting here. I'm bored. I i've just finished doing my practicals at the hospital and mm. i've been here thinking uh i'm so tired and there's been like a lot of challenges ever since nursing it hasn't been an easy journey and this just clarifies everything mm. that i've been uh questioning for myself and all like other people who are surrounding me the questions that have, they've been asking me so it has been a really really great life and i'm enjoying like every minute of it so thank you so much uh nessie and also marine uh, my question was um it's about uh the burnout that we experience as people you know as mm -hmm. students or just yeah. as people in general you know always be energetic and there are some points in life where you just feel so demotivated and you feel like you just want to quit so i wanted to know that how do you handle that because i remember joining um i remember starting last year because i'm a second year now and that next year i'm gonna be doing midway free and i've heard like a lot of my seniors saying it's not that it's challenging and if you don't have mm -hmm. the heart for nursing it's gonna be really hard so when i joined i remember i didn't have much information honestly i was not even really interested in nursing i was just like ah i was accepted and i've always wanted to be in health honestly my first choice was uh medicine so when i didn't get accepted i was like ah you know what let me just go do nursing i'll go in through jump and then that's it i don't even want to get um attached to nursing i'm just gonna you know pass through and then go to gym but now i remember last year i, I reapplied for medicine and then i think in the middle of the year i talked to someone about now i feel like i'm starting to get attached to nursing and i didn't really like that i didn't really like that i want to be honest so then he said to me that honestly i have to allow the profession to find me I have to allow everything that is happening to 
actually I, I have to embrace it because one thing you know, there's a reason that I found myself having been accepted into nursing even with my great results and all that so I have to allow myself and embrace every moment of it so then I realized that had I been accepted this year to go to this in, I wouldn't have gone anymore because I'm like the moment of it. I remember I first met um, Nessie at our career expo at UJ. And I was like, damn, I'm very much at the right place. So what I need to do now is to focus because I remember last year almost like two modules and that was the, like, the worst experience of my life because I had a really, really, really have been out i may have spent like the whole week without studying every day i was mm -hmm. just tired 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 i wanted to ask how do you handle a burnout without it affecting you severely academically and so career wise okay thank you so much Ntivo. i think you are saying something that i always hear from my students they say yo ma'am we our mental health yo ma'am you know we, we we are tired you know and things like that but what i just want to say is that as you are there in university your 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 your, your parents and you know your family are looking up to you you know we we come from families where you might find that you are a breadwinner you might find that um you are the only one who managed to go to school so i i, I normally encourage myself by finding something that gives me strength like why am i doing this so you so we all have reasons why you know or something that can really uh, encourage you to continue with your studies so find that and that will really give you the strength that you need you know so ish, 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 ish. So, so. that is so powerful i'm sorry i'm sorry okay let me keep quiet and not be distracted <laughs> yes so find a reason to continue so find something that can push you to really pierce through this burnout because burnout is just there to make to derail you or it's just there to make you think oh no i can't do this my studies is too much you know things like that but first thing is that find something that gives you strength it can be your mother your family you know wanting to do this for them or at the end i want to make them proud you know i want to come back with this degree I want to be, you know, I'm the breadwinner. I want to do this for, for, for my family. So it's very important to find that. And you also have to find balance. Because as a student, you, you need that balance. You have to strike, you have to have that balance. So you have to not procrastinate or do things to, 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 to the last minute. As a student, you need a very healthy life, especially also for your mental health as well. So if it means that you have to study earlier on, then you make sure you study on time. You know, you do things on time. Find find a plan or find a schedule that will work for you because of burnout is things that we experience in life. But what like what will make you succeed is finding a reason to continue. I think that is something that you need to, to assist to give you the strength that you need. So that's the only way that I can say. And find people that you can study with you know studying and studying alone sometimes you just feel like i man why am i doing this but if you have a, a a friend or you have you know a classmate that you are together you are studying together it really does give you that motivation it brings back this thing where man i don't want to disappoint my mother i don't want to disappoint you know my family so i think that is how you can fight ben out there's really no other medicine but know the reason why you started and know why you want to do nursing and have that as your goal in mind despite whatever i will find strength to continue and and Ndivo, okay noted thank you very much i i want to say to you i think you said something like you, it seems like the profession is getting into you right and you don't think you like that right yeah that was last year when i said that to a friend i was like mm. in this uh profession just to sell through and go to do medicine mm. and i i didn't like the fact that i'm enjoying the time that i was spending with patients mm. enjoyed helping them and seeing them get better you know when i started mm. to do uh boma wound care you know the bed mm. baths 
the changing of the diapers because it's part of training and i was like no i'm supposed to be even enjoying this because this is too much for me because most of the time i would from the hospital and i'm so tired but i would feel like okay at least i did something great today i made someone smile i remember this other patient saying to me that i'm i'm the first person who actually made her smile ever since she came into hospital and i was like this is something i've always wanted to do but not through this but through me being a doctor so i said to her i, I don't know where i'm getting confused it's just uh it's mm. just uh destiny catching up with me but i don't really think i like it because one thing about me i don't like finding myself in situations where i don't really know what to decide because it's about my future but i was not sure at that point but after that talk with him i was he was like let it be let let it grow on you and you will see where that takes you but so far, I wouldn't really trade nursing for anything. I'm enjoying it here. I'm loving it here. And I love every minute. And let me tell you, you remind me so much of myself, right? I mm. wanted to be a doctor. But I always mm. tell people that I used to say I wanted to be a doctor because I never went to the hospital like Maureen did to see what happens in the hospital. Mm. But when I think about what I wanted to do, I'm realizing that in actual fact, I was describing nursing, not medicine. But mm. because in the community, the word doctor was exalted above nursing um i chose that word but in my heart i knew like you are saying that you made a patient feel the way the patient said you made her feel but you felt like yes i wanted to do this but not with this title with a different title mm. i think the issue is uh, for the longest time doctors were the ones that were exalted in, in societies mm. and mm. we wanted to be identified with that but we have the passion for nursing i i went mm. through exactly the same thing that you went through where i found myself falling in love with the profession i was like okay what's going on now like what what is this and i always say this and i think i said it as well with you guys at uj that had i became a medical doctor i wouldn't be where i am today i would not be the nurse z that people knows today i would probably be on call right now um so you are definitely definitely on the right path and i wanted to say to you that that portion of burnout it doesn't stop ne? even when you finish nursing school when you get into the working uh, space it you you're gonna get burnout i i get burnout i went off um instagram and facebook now i'm only left with this one because i i get burnout even from the work that i'm passionate about speaking about hiv speaking about nursing i get burnout on that and i have goals career goals and aspirations like maureen said that you need to find a why i have a career goal that i want to be a, a country an international country director at some point and on days or months sometimes i i go into the pits for a month and on days and months where i feel like that i remind myself that hmm you want to be a country director you, you, you unfortunately you can't sit here for long you you gotta get up like maureen said that if you are on your on your knees it's time for you to have a conversation with yourself the motivation needs to come from within and you will be able to stand up and move forward but don't see it as a a something wrong with you there's nothing wrong with you we we do feel that burnout even us as as mm. people that you guys look at and say mm, i'm very inspired mm. by her but when we feel the burnout we don't come out and say hey and yeah go away and yeah go away. no we don't do that we just okay. i posted on instagram and i said I'm, I'm taking a social media break people were asking are you fine and i said yeah i'm okay but these are, are, are us trends that we get to go through particularly if you are someone who is passionate and goal orientated so you truly truly need to 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 find your why it's what's gonna keep you moving ne? okay thank you uh, lastly it's about the stigmas around nursing and nurses become i think going to the hospital made me realize that okay the stigmas that are surrounding nursing and nurses actually mm. discourage some nurses mm. and also at some point i think that also affected me because i have like high school friends, high school classmates who are busy mm. asking oh Debo, how's how's life what are you currently busy with career going what's your mm. career 
and mm. i remember earlier last year i was afraid and ashamed to say hey guys i'm doing nursing because they always expected me to be doing something more massive like it and i think that i've made me go into the pits for like a couple months and i was like oh my god when i graduate what am i going to say how are people going to react to being a nurse because they expected me to do something far much better than this so at some point i think i also as students that there needs to be some sort of outreach as to how we deal with people who are like to because most of the time i would see it even here at res where i'm staying i remember when they started seeing that this son is doing nursing they would say oh he is about root stuff like that you know mm -hmm. and one of my friend even now i still remind him how he used to tease me of um much of a rudeness I am going to be because I'm that one person in their mind right there and then. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, just because I'm this talkative and I speak my mind right there and then doesn't mean that I'm exactly going to be that rudeness. But one thing I know for sure is that I'm going to advocate for my because that's one of the duties. I think also what we need students is to get uh, the platform where we are being taught immediately after the intake or before when you apply for nursing you need to be taught that okay this is not an easy profession this is not a profession where it's gonna be all roses and candles going to mm -hmm. enjoy at the end of the day you you find yourself saying oh i enjoyed every moment of it mm -hmm. i think people need to be taught that okay nursing is not an easy there's stigmas that are surrounded they need to know that they are all worth it so we are worth being there also because mm -hmm. the income and the motivation also goes a long way i remember when we were taken i was taken by surprise that how even my first year i have to go do my practicals i have to be rotating at hospitals like what i thought maybe it existed maybe and is as much as I was uh, as I knew because I did much research about nursing, I just accepted. But when I got there, they told me about uniforms, having to do mm -hmm. practicals, and I'm like, oh my god, I wanted to go home so bad. This is this is not this is not how I planned. This is not this is not it. God. Mm -hmm. so I think, um, <laughs> So I was like, oh my God, uh, this is this is not going to be an easy journey. I saw from then then, but I think if there can be like some disclaimers to say, okay, my child, you've accepted, you've been accepted in nursing. Please note that this is not going to be an easy journey. And this is not to scare you, by, but it is for you to know that it's not an easy journey. So if you know that you are going to have the heart for it please hop on if you are not sure <laughs> hop on and you will in any if you feel like you're I not enjoying on. the journey feel fair of because it's so hard honestly it was it was so hard i remember calling my mother this other day and i'm like mama i i can't do this anymore i can't do this anymore mina i didn't sign up for this i didn't sign up for changing people's diapers mean I'm, I'm 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 way much better than this that i'm looking back i think that's when i started to actually realize that there's a lot of people that need help out there for someone who's uh, my grandmother's age to be in hospital and make sure for my help to say my child i need help of this diaper it's now wet it's sold and i just need your help it takes for someone who's in hospital especially we can see that we are dealing with a lot of patients free professions some are some are even teachers some are like well-known people and they find themselves in hospital for them to actually be humble and never where they are like i need help need help mm -hmm. and you actually see that they are vulnerable you have to be mm -hmm. willing to help them it's a lot it's a lot it takes i don't know i wouldn't say courage but it takes of you it takes maybe 75 percent of your heart because there you need to be patient because we meet like a lot of people demanding people rude people some don't even want your help but they need help but they don't want to be helped so yeah. i think if there can be motivation encouragement disclaimers you know for us to be one to say this is what's going to happen just remain strong
Remember that youth for this reason. Remember that you are ever passionate about this to find yourself through this profession. And you are for sure going to have to grow in this because trust me, I was so young last year and looking at the growth that I've had since last year, since I came into this profession, it has been so good. Okay, I'm going to go on load shedding, but I'm not going to lose my Wi-Fi. But I want to say this to you, ne? If you, I, I, I like posting videos of me speaking in events. And when I introduce myself, I tell people my position, right, at work. But I also tell them that I am a registered nurse by profession. Do you know why? Because in the spaces that I go to, Mail and Guardian, um, Unsung Heroes of, of um, Sunday World, Brightest Young Minds Africa, right? These are prestigious um, platforms for young people in Africa and in South Africa, right? And you find lawyers, doctors also being um, in those spaces. I introduced myself as a quality assurance coordinator in public health but a registered nurse by profession because I want people to associate these prestigious stages with nurses. I no longer want people to be shocked that there is a nurse in the list of mail and guardian. I was so hurt that mm. we didn't nominate anyone this year. But I don't want people, because people now they get shocked that, wow, you were on, on Sunday World List. Wow, you were a brightest young mind. They get shocked because we, we are not associated with greatness as a profession. For the longest time, we were not associated with publicity and greatness. Let me put it like that. And we, as the generation of the nurses now, we need to change it. So in your gatherings, in your high school gatherings, with your, your, your high school friends, when they ask, what are you doing? You need to own it and say, I'm doing a, 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 a degree in nursing science. You put science in it, ne? You don't say, I'm doing nursing. You say, I'm doing a degree in nursing science. Ne? Mm. They need to know, listen, they are not in nursing. They've never mm. been in nursing. They don't know what mm. nursing is about. They hear the community speaking about nursing. So you need, it's your responsibility to teach them and to show them what nursing mm. is about. That's what mm. I'm doing on social media, right? You don't, mm. you don't, you don't see me uh, 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 fighting people, but you see me showing people what nursing is above everything else we are not even making noise we are showing people what nursing is and what nurses are capable of maureen for maureen to say she is the youngest phd nursing um a, 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 a doctor she 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 put in the work and she 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 is she is speaking against the stigma that is there that nurses are never great people. Nurses are not educated people. That's what they say, right? But we've got a, 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 an, an entire whole NQF level 10 um, a nurse amongst us. So it is our responsibility. It's her, she made her part. You see how Dr. Blade Nzimande a, 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 a blow a, 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 a horn on her. She made her part. She made a mark in the nursing profession so even you in your small circle in your family members you need to teach them or you need to show them what nursing is so don't don't shrink back and i know it's intimidating don't shy. With me, yeah don't shy away even with me I, mm. I sometimes have to think twice before i ask for that mic and i sometimes have to say well, how are how are they gonna react but i do it mm. uh, 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 regardless and some will say oh you too why are you too smart why are you not becoming a nurse no 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 i mean why are you not becoming a doctor and i always said no no no, no. i don't want to be on call i don't want to be on call i am fine here and if i if i was a doctor you probably wouldn't have seen me where you are seeing me today and you are saying i must become a doctor so you need to own it in your own space and by owning it in your own space you are assisting us who are appearing like we are owning it in in, in bigger spaces with your little friends you you need to tell them that you are doing nursing sciences ne? Yes, yes, noted. So I think um, it has also been fulfilling to know that um, now that I have been here, I remember last um, one of my aunts was like, why are you doing nursing? Because I heard that you guys get underpaid after graduation and yeah. all that. And I was like, no, this is actually what I feel like I need to do first 
before I go into something else because I feel like I'm going to be able to discover myself. And she was like, but then still my child, you'd for this. I know you, I've seen you grow and all that. And I was like, no, actually through this, I can be able to help my grand to, to determine why she's always pain, to determine why she catches flu every silly. now and then. <laughs> and I was okay. Can you do this? Let me prove you wrong or whatever it is that I'm going to prove to you. But one thing I know for sure is that you are going to change. I'm going to change the narrative for this whole uh, stigma around nursing because now I am in it. I'm going to show that not only people are not only excel in nursing, they do great and they provide the greatest care one can ever get in mm. nursing because that's what nursing is all about. you provide care you you show people that actually you know even though you don't know what they're going through but you understand that they're going through and you're there to support them and to help them if they need assistance i think i need to to have a conversation with you student nurses ne? should i should i have a conversation with you student nurses and devil hmm. yes you should it would really be great Okay, we'll have a live for you guys, ne? and I'll invite you guys as speakers. Mm. Okay. Maureen, do you have anything to say to Ndivo? No, 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 no. I just feel that Ndivo should, should not shy away from, you know, talking about her profession. We have doctors who are nurses mm. right here with you. Mm -hmm. We have professors, mm -hmm. we have deans, we have, you know, there's so much that you can do in nursing. Mm -hmm. Nursing is not only, you know, at the at the bedside. There are so many things. You, if you can look at, we have nurse entrepreneurs. We have a lot that you can do in nursing. You can branch into so many fields. So that is what you need to share with your colleagues. So let us change the stigma that you, you, you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I really I am so glad that Z will do a... a a life for you so that you can really really share and break down all this stigma that has been said about a uh, nursing which is very very important it's high time that people know that nursing is not only about this you know mm -hmm. so but yeah thank you so much in Divo for that maureen i think i should have warned you but i think i think you know you know that these lives they can they can drag hey uh, sometimes we even do a lala, but in in Vuselele, in Vuselele, we toss like a lala vuka. We two twelve. Abantu benga funu lala. What can you say to U U U U I think you wanted to say something to her. Okay, thank you, Z. I think uh, you both have covered uh, what I wanted to say. That um, I think both of you have already identified a gap. Mm. Uh, of something that we really have to attend to mm. and it's not really that is something that we have to only attend it to uh mm. the, the 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 first day of them uh, uh, uh of the students when they are starting on in the universities i think it's something that we have to include in the career guidances mm. and also even in schools in churches everywhere where we can be able to tell them, sell our profession, mm. tell them that nursing is not only about the uniform, nursing is not only about the hospital, because I think most of the horror is in the hospital where they think the hours mm. of work, the hours of work that they are going to be doing and what they've seen when they are being admitted in the hospital to say, Mene, I won't be able to do that, you know. And then also even the horrible um things that uh, our profession has been labeled with. Uh, I always say when I talk to the nurses and I say, I know to, to the patients, even the nurses, not all of us are kind. I know there are a while, yeah. there are colleagues that mm -hmm. are not kind that, you know, sometimes when they talk, you feel like you can hide yourself, mm -hmm. the way they talk to patients, the way they talk to the community. So it's something that we really have to sell to our, 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 um, uh, 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 our, young, uh, our young stars. So Ndivu, what I will tell you, I don't know when last did I wear my uniform. I don't know when last did I wear uh, my epaulets. I think it's about mm -hmm. seven years. I think I wore them maybe, in, I think it was in 2020, 
when uh, I was doing the graduation of the Nemark nurses, because when we are doing the graduation of the Nemark nurses, that's when we have to wear the full uniform. So nursing is not only about the uniform, my dear. It's also not about, I, I know the exhaustion that you are talking about, the burnout that you are talking about, you know, more of the books, more of the things. And then, but then now, I'm happy that now you are developing a passion mm -hmm. about it. So don't be shy about it. Just be proud that you are doing a noble profession. You know, is there any other profession that is being called a noble profession? Mm. Nothing. Like, yeah, the only profession that is being called a noble profession, it is our profession. There are many people that are in nursing, uh, that, that are in higher position. Do you know Mrs. Miss Cindy Siwe Chikunga? She was one of the principals in the college where I trained, and she's now the Minister of Transport. Ne? She's a professional nurse, that one. She's an advanced midwife, that lady. You know, when she stands and teaches midwife, you know, she, she was one of the people that, although I'm not a midwife person, but I used to like her lecturing on on midwifery so uh you are in a good profession just find yourself and even your peers don't be shy to tell them you know um I, I, the, the main thing that made me to come to nurses you know to nursing do you know those dresses that they used to wear yeah. those, those <laughs> yeah. compelling dresses yes. you know and yeah, I used to see them wearing those crampoline dresses with their brown shoes and their pantyhose. Do you know how how nice did they look by that time? And I was like, you know, I just want to be like them. I, I want to so, uh, uh, one day wear this white uniform. And our mothers, those that we find them, although they were rude to us, yo, I can mm -hmm. tell you stories about the nurses. But when it comes to uniform, I shall be by Koga. You know, they will make you one just to come just for the sake of the uniform. So, uh, but I am happy that you, have, you are already finding yourself. And while you are finding yourself, look at your passion. What are you passionate about? You are already, you said you don't like it, that you start to like it. God is telling you something. True. You are in somewhere where he needs you to be. Mm -hmm. So just look on where you are passion, you have passion, and then just grow on that. Mm -hmm. And one day you will remember this life and say, you know what? I grew from this life. Z and um, Dr. Maureen, there's something that you have to work with. We as the, 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 the older generations, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, when I tell people that I'm turning 50 this year, they, they just say I'm lying, I'm turning 50 this year. So I'm just left with few years to go and, 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 um, near fall and get my pension. So, you know, so we need you guys to lead this. But if you need our guidance and everything, we are available. I am available. Let me not say we are available. <laughs> I am available to assist you guys. And then so that we can be able to, uh, but we are sharing the youngsters to come to this noble profession. Thank you. We highly appreciate you, Sis Zuzil. Afeziwe Amadinga, what a beautiful name. Hello. Hello everyone, hello everyone. How are you how are you how are you how are you all doing? Is that the meaning of your name, Afeziwe Amating? No, no, that's not even my name, by the way. I don't even have TikTok. I took my sister's TikTok because <laughs> I saw an advert for this on LinkedIn. So wow. Like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, welcome. <laughs> yeah, so as soon as I saw the advert on LinkedIn, I was like, I have to I, mean, I set an alarm like your Mkaya, Dr. Maureen. So oh, I had to drop. Wow. So, yeah. welcome. Thank what you. is your name? Welcome. My name is Gosi. Gosi. Gosi Kona Okay, Gosi. Over to you. Yes, yes, yes. Um, first of all, I just like to say congratulations to the youngest PhD holder in a nursing discipline at UP. We really, really inspirational. We look up to you, and we're so proud of you, doctor. So, um. My question was just to ask, like, I'm really like um, curious because I know, like, um, when you're doing like postgraduate like qualifications, it's not it's not very easy. So, um, 
me personally personally i'm i'm interested in like critical care i love critical care so mm -hmm. that's what i'm interested in doing later and i also love lecturing i love to teach like um my fellow peers as well like you spoke i'm doing my final year actually in my nursing degree mm -hmm. so uh, i've been like a peer a, a mentor for my for my peers ever since i was in second year i worked like mentorship jobs for like younger nurses so i was asking i want to ask if it's um easier or i mean better to pursue your postgraduate studies or your PhD or your master's as a lecturer instead of um, what is instead of like doing it while you are in the wards and working there. Okay, so thank you so much. <clears throat> um, obviously, um, for you to enter masters, they want two years of um, they want two years of experience. Uh, post your degree qualification so i think in the meantime you can also do your pg deep as you are saying you are interested in intensive care so that really puts you at a at a at a better at a, at a better advantage when you are to do your masters hmm. and i really do not know what is it with our south african nursing council they do not recognize this master's and phd especially at a clinical level mm. so but it doesn't mean that um, you can't do a master's when you are working at the hospital we have a lot of students right now my master's students a lot of them are working in the hospital mm. so for you to be appointed at the university you should have um, already having your master's so you can't get into a, 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 an institution like your university and college right now without the masters. So meaning that you would be doing the masters while you are still at clinical, looking at the end results that you want to see yourself one day working either at a college or a university. So you will do this masters while you are still working at the clinical. So that is where this masters is going to work. And what I can say is that Masters is not only for those who want to be in academia. Mm. As, as I've indicated, is that masters can also put you at a good point when you want to apply to be part of your directorate, you know, things like that. They really can also assist in that regard. Mm. But you can do masters while you are working at the hospital with the plan of one day moving over into your academia but for you to also come in academia we want you to have your nursing education so you can't teach without having nursing education so that is also another postgraduate qualification that you need so you need a postgraduate qualification in in education you also need a, a postgraduation qualification like a specialty in the area of interest where you want to work so that you are highly specialized like you are an expert in the field that you want to teach in and then lastly you can do your masters so you do your masters while you're in clinical when you are waiting to go to um when you are waiting to go to work either in academia and whatsoever so really the masters is what they are looking for now i i, I know in colleges now all their lecturers they've sent them to say they need to come to the university and study further um with the masters so it really does open a lot of doors not only for academia but in other areas as well mm. uh, Maureen, someone thank says you very much thank you very much for that okay. someone you. says that the fact that sunk doesn't recognize masters um it, it's a it's a disc encouragement but i i don't think we should be just discouraged because mm. of that i mean it, it just because sunk doesn't recognize it it doesn't mean it doesn't open opportunities right mm. yeah mm. just because some yeah. doesn't recognize it it doesn't mean mm. that it doesn't open opportunities yes it opens uh, a lot of opportunities not at a clinical level mm. but in 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 so many other areas like now if you are to apply to be a directorate you know other 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 other, other like also work in the department of health True. you know having a master's as well can really put you at a a, a, a better place as well mm. so it really does open doors true because yeah. department of health actually uh, will will put out a post on management and say masters is a requirement right um so okay. let's 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 get those masters guys lungisani yeah. hi 
Hello, how are you? We are good. How are you? Hello. How are you? Yes, I'm fine. I'm fine. Yo, I'm so shaking behind the phone. I'm like, what, about... <laughs> what am I going to ask you? <laughs> Why are you shaking? I have a lot. I have a lot to ask. <laughs> no, I'm just shaking. Just... Okay. So, uh, it's so nervous, like, speaking with the professionals while we're still a student. You see, like, this is telling you how the field is like, all those kind of things. I'm so shaky. I'm like, what if my question is invalid? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, listen, you know, one of the reasons I use social media platforms, right, is to make things informal. I could have said, let's do this on Teams. And that would, what, that would be intimidating. Mm -hmm. The fact that I, I said we, we must do it on, on TikTok and I'm wearing my gown, then it should tell you that there is no invalid question. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, no, it's fine, okay. no problem. But now you see, they are, they are doctors here, yeah, they are specializing people here. Yeah. So it, it's, <laughs> there's a lot going on. So we, get, we are being shaken by, by you guys. But anyway, it's fine. Uh, I just wanted to to to, to support uh, the one of of the one that you were suggesting of having uh, student life uh, okay. student life whereby we are sharing whatsoever we are going through within mm -hmm. the profession you know, all those kind of things and mm -hmm. and as well uh, the one that's the one that's for me the one that I see is kind of comfortable with me uh, mm -hmm. the special I don't know whether it's a speciality or I don't know how I should go about. The one whereby I will be working in a mine. I don't know how I should go about like being a nurse who's working in the mine in mines. It's occupational. This is the one way I want to. It's occupational. It is an occupational health. Yes, it's it's the nurses who are in the mines are they are occupational health specialists. Oh, okay. So I have to I, once I'm done with this uh, with this course, I have to. You're do gonna do professional health, or I yes, don't know. yes. You're mm. gonna do a PG dip, uh, a postgraduate diploma in occupational health, and you can even do your masters on that, and you can even do your PhD in that. Mm. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Next thing, you are a right, mind no CEO. Imagine. H H H H H. Yeah, I. I you, you know what? I feel like nursing is is too broad. I feel like mm -hmm. nursing is too broad, broad, mm -hmm. broad, broad. It's very much broad. So yeah, there there are a lot of like um, work in the nursing, like in the nursing field. I feel like mm -hmm. yeah. So now the only thing that we only know about nursing is that it's only interaction of patient and the nurse. But mm -hmm. there are also other mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, like occupations within the field so yeah you see yeah okay so you know what i'm gonna do ne? so I'm... that was my question for for, for, for today so lungisa what i'm gonna do yes. is i'm gonna make an announcement right i'm gonna make an announcement video on my timeline to say i'm calling on student nurses so you guys it's your responsibility to go and tell your classmates and everyone else that we have a gathering as student nurses, ne? and the likes of Maureen, Kaki, so I'll, I'll also invite, invite all my ex expect mm. friends to be on the live. They are not going to be there as guests. You guys are going to be the guests, but they are going to be here to answer questions and, and provide guidance. So I will put out um, a call, but it's your guys' responsibility to share it with your, your colleagues in your respective um, institutions. Ne? Yes, no, it's fine. And also another thing, it's fine, we're gonna do that. And also another thing, the one that's touched me as well is that people they are they are not they are not uh, aware of what is nursing is all about, you see. Mm. There's also this program that I'm into. Uh, I'm also a a a person of I don't know if are you guys aware of a program called Center, the South African Nursing Student Association. Uh, in mm. universities, we so I'm started also, uh, that. I'm also a 100% of that um, organization. So mm. yes, yes, yes. So the, the the only plan that I was having this year, I only wanted to go out to 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 reach out to the matriculants or uh, to go to the schools whereby I will be.
doing um, <clears throat> all about all those kind of things so that people are not restricted like all, so that people don't maybe when we are doing all those kind of things people don't they'll, they'll find their passion within the nursing because like people they are they are, they are narrow-minded about the this profession mm. it, 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 i love how you guys you guys you see how um, we yes to do Lungile, you see how Lungisani, you see how we are taking it to you guys, right? I love how you guys are taking it to the high school kids. Mm. I, I love that. You guys are doing an amazing job and you must not yes. stop. You must take it to high school. Let a, a, someone walk into nursing knowing what they are walking into mm. and not wait for Maureen and Zanele uh, to tell them what are they walking into while they are in it. So the fact that you guys are taking it to high school, it's, it's lovely. Continue doing that and encourage others to also, to also do it, okay? Yes, yes, no, it's fine. No problem. We'll do that. Okay. Um, okay, guys. I am going to allow Maureen to give us her parting words and then we are going to go to bed. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Doc? Yeah, hey. I think we had such a wonderful session. Um, thank you so much, Z, for giving me the opportunity to come and share my journey, share my story. Mm -hmm. And hopefully I have encouraged the young people, the young nurses out there mm -hmm. to say to you that your dream is valid, you know. So whatever that you put your mind to, so whatever that you really want to achieve at the end of your, your you know, your studies or your at the end of the nursing profession, it is doable only if you put your mind to it and you really have the goal the vision you see this is what i really want to achieve at the end of the day mm -hmm. so very important you need to align yourself with mentors who really can take you through this process mm -hmm. and i really thank Z that there is such a platform like this that we can share we can come to you share our journeys at an early stage mm -hmm. while you're still thinking about what is it that you, you you are passionate about you know at the early stage you can start now thinking about your future and thinking about where do you see yourself in terms of your nursing profession and i do i really want to thank this um following people who made it possible for me in my life professor mavis Mulawizi. Yeah. She's, she, she is our South African Research Chair at the University of Pretoria for granting me the, the, the opportunity really to, to spread my wings. You know, people like Prof. Petru from uh, Esifako Makato University, people mm -hmm. who really do believe that young people matter, who really believe that young people can take upon those stages, can, can occupy those spaces. People mm -hmm. like uh, 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 our Dean for Research at the University of Pretoria, Prof. Mashamba Thompson, who really also uh, uh, thinks about young people and supports the vision that young people has. People like Sis Zuzile, you know, I, 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 I really love that they are, they, you know, we keep saying that the older generation don't, but they are those who really are here to listen to us. And I really mm -hmm. think that we do have such people who are there who are willing to pass on the baton to us mm -hmm. and hold hands to hold hands with us and mentor us and really show us the way because of we really we in order for us to have like a good profession or have you know talk and restore this status quo in our profession we need to hold hands we mm -hmm. need to act as a unity we need to be united so I really thank you, Z. And I remember you once saying, who can be our Florence Nightingale? Every day I'm always thinking, well, Mara Z, Mara is, is our next Florence Nightingale, can <laughs> it? So, but yeah, I, 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 I'm really so happy and so thankful mm -hmm. that I got this opportunity. Please, if anyone wants to, you know, ask further about what to do in terms of their studies you know all those things i am there you can follow me on dr maureen and musi mm -hmm. you can also send me dms you know things like that i am there for you i am there you know we want to also mentor other young people so i'm also there if you want to be mentored you want to learn more you want to study further 
I am there for you. Thank sure. you so much for the opportunity. Oh, thank you so much for taking two hours of your time. <laughs> to be two hours 30 minutes to be exact yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, someone said on the comment section three hours see i shy in this house and they are not lying <laughs> at times they make me go to bed at 12 midnight and i'll be like no no guys i'm out <laughs> thank you so much maureen i truly appreciate this um it's going to be for people who did not um like who found it um not at the beginning for people who didn't find it at the beginning it's going to be on youtube um on this is necessary so all the lives that we've had yo, like you guys have have given so much purpose to my to my youtube channel maureen because i feel like it is an archive of greatness in mm. nursing you know i go through my youtube channel and watch um all the lives i've held from the first life that i held with unogo who has been here thank you so much my friend for being here um i look at those lives and you guys this journey uh, you are literally what continues uh, to fuel us who are passionate about making the profession um, to be recognized amongst other professions. Uh, so yeah, anyone who did not catch the entire whole session, don't worry, it's going to be on This Is Ness Z. Yay, I, I am looking for a fire, um, what is it called? For a fire uh, title for this particular uh, live <laughs> there by TikTok. I, I mean, mm. uh, YouTube. I'm looking for a fight. one that will catch literally everyone and anyone who logs on YouTube. Uh, but I'm very grateful to the people that joined. This Zuzile, you know my heart. Yo, mm. you know my heart. You are such a blessing to me personally. Um, I've never invited you here. You so I think you, you probably saw me, and because you know me, you, you stayed. But your input in every li life that we have, and also the fact that you encourage us as, as young nurses, um, it keeps us going, honestly speaking, because at times we meet obstacles and challenges out there that makes us feel like people like you don't exist in this profession. But mm. each and every single time we gather here, you remind us that there are other Zuzilas that we might meet out there. Uh, so we truly appreciate you. Yo, we truly, truly appreciate you. And I think I will say this in every live. Um, but yeah, guys, let us all go to bed and we will see you on our next live. I don't know when will that be because I don't have a guest just yet. Um, but yeah, I love you all. Those who are here, those who comment, you guys know I appreciate you. I might not be calling you every day by name, but I appreciate you guys so, 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 so much. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. I must be the guest. Sia does not want to, guys. He's here. I don't know. I don't know what's Sia's problem. Yeah, everyone is saying Sia must come. I don't know what's Sia's problem, guys, but we are near to... We are ni vusiya, we are ni bona, and satetim na. We are ni vusiya. Siya must speak. Siya speak. Pun intended. Siya must speak. Good night, you guys. Have a lovely night. Good night. Thank you.